Here is an intriguing concept, stopping youth violence before it happens by logging on to Facebook. The internet can be a fertile breeding ground for violence that goes from the virtual world to the real one. This according to NYU's Steinhardt School. Last year in New York City alone, at least 240 shootings and 24 murders began as online arguments. Looking at those numbers, an obvious fix was needed. So the school, along with the Citizens Crime Commission, which is a nonprofit group that focuses on crime prevention, launched the pilot e-responder program last year. The program focuses on de-escalating online fights and is a result of years of research. It was so effective, now being rolled out across the entire city. Joining now with some details about all that is Shabnam Jabdani, who's an assistant professor of applied psychology at NYU, and Richard I. Aborn, who is the president of the Citizens Crime Commission. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Richard, let me ask you to start out by explaining this program to us. What's, how is it set up and what's the purpose? So let me start with the problem first. The problem was, as you said, we were seeing a lot of violence going from the virtual back into the real world. But the preceding step was we were seeing vitriol starting on the streets and then transferring to Facebook and then coming back. So you'd have these fights that start in the street. They would switch to Facebook where they would live, where they'd be permanent, where they would get amplified, where they'd get more and more violent. Then the taunts would start and the taunts would then result in people going it's to the back streets. Out, almost like the, and a storm brewing and building Precisely. and getting stronger yeah. and then gets back out. Precisely. So as you said, lots of murders and lots of shootings. So the question became, what do we do? So we knew that we had people in the communities that we were working with on violence prevention. We knew there were methodologies to intervene in, in personal violence. So we thought, why not take those methodologies and create a curriculum to train these violence prevention specialists to work online, to go right onto Facebook and intervene on the Growing Violent Act on Facebook. So we did that with NYU, which has been a great partnership, and the e-responder is the result. Shabna, let me talk to you about this, because part of your focus has been, as a scholar, on violence and antisocial behavior. What is the science telling us about the link between social media and actual street violence? Mm -hmm. So, first of all, not much to date. So one of the really fascinating parts of this, this partnership has been to really think about what we need to know about social media, partly because um, we, as a, as a society, have not yet necessarily defined the parameters of mm -hmm. communication when it comes to social media. But what we did know is that people are communicating about violence um, before during and after violence happens. It's not simply an isolated act that happens and then goes away and disappears. And that social media amplifies that kind of, the fact that it lives on um, into forever, kind of. What is it about social media, do you mm -hmm. think, that it, it seems to me, I might be wrong, that seems to enhance this notion of, I'm gonna talk thing. about it beforehand. I think that it is this, this paradox between um, anonymity and having an audience. I think there's also a lot of posturing that goes on. Mm -hmm. One gang member will confront another gang member, mm -hmm. show how tough they are, seek retribution for a perceived wrong, and then once they seek the retribution, that will be responded to by the other side, and then it's permanent. You've got to carry out the act or else you will be shamed. You will lose your sense of manhood. So that process then plays itself out in the street, and we're dealing mostly with with, with kids. So these are not people that are sitting back and contemplating the consequences of what they're doing. They're acting spontaneously and they're acting out of deep emotional trauma and grief and real anger. So that's what we tie into. We try and de-escalate those emotional states, bring them down a little bit. We try and get the person who's putting up these violent posts to take the post down and then come into one of our sites and actually work on the issue. New York City has very wisely funded 20 cure violence sites around the city. Cure violence is a methodology that utilizes what we call credible messengers. Credible messengers are individuals who have walked the walk. They've been in jail, they've been involved in shootings, they've been in ganged, but they've realized that that's the wrong way to go. And they work in these cure violence sites, which are community-based and frankly, some of the roughest communities in New York, and they interact with kids. They have great so they've got contacts the credibility, on the street. The contacts, they the contacts the that make the them relevant to these kids. So we're working with them because they are a fantastic portal into these communities. So we're working with them throughout the city now, and that's where we're getting these, these good results. Hey, we'll talk about that. Talk about the results. What are you seeing? Absolutely. 
I just have to say, as a researcher, these results blew my mind, truly, um, because this was just a pilot rollout. But the first thing that really that really blew my mind was that the um, the, the cure violence sites that had a violence pre prevention professional who was trained in the responder model, um, they interrupted almost 200 acts of violence. The sites that the folks more than that you did had not, anticipated going oh, into it, absolutely, like vastly more. Yeah. Yes. And the, 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 the folks that did not receive this training, but had training in the cure violence model, because, because you know, uh, these, are, these are all cure violence sites, um, interrupted almost none on social media. Interesting. And, and to yes. make the underlying message here, which transcends social media, the truth is a lot of these kids don't want to be in these groups. A lot of these kids want a way out of this. And here, a credible messenger, not quite a peer, usually somebody a little bit older, right. is saying, hey, I'm lending you a hand come in, let's discuss this, let's get you out of this lifestyle, and that's really beginning to work. And that's why, again, the city, I think, has been very smart to invest so much money in this methodology, and I would just urge them to keep doing it. Well, it, it just sounds like a fabulous concept, and the fact that it's working so well in practice, I, I think, gives great cause for optimism here, because clearly, we've identified a problem, now the idea is, let's see what we can do about it. Shabnam, Richard, thank you so much, both of you, and, and good luck, and we'll get you back in, and we'll talk about it down the road a little bit, and see how well it's been doing. Happy to All do right. it. Good thank luck you. with it. Thank you. Be well. Take care. Thank you.